back to our top story this hour. Some of the biggest tech CEOs in the U.S. appear before Congress for an antitrust hearing. Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg is the youngest of the four, but he has the most recent experience on Capitol Hill. That was apparent as he deflected accusations that he had broken competition laws by buying Instagram. I think with hindsight, it probably looks like obvious that Instagram would have reached the scale that it has today. But at the time, it was far from obvious. It was not a guarantee that Instagram was going to succeed. The acquisition has done wildly well, largely because uh, not just of the founder's talent, but because we invested. Former FTC Commissioner Moselle Thompson is back with us now. So, Moselle, is it true that Instagram may not have succeeded if it wasn't for Facebook? I can't predict that, but I do think that Facebook had a significant role in making Instagram what it is, not only in terms of scalability, but also economic investment and also with personnel, people who, who they hired to bring in to, to essentially make Instagram big and more prominent. So there was substantial investment. Um, there's no question to me that there are some synergies involved because um, Facebook knew how to because it did it already, and that uh, that DNA is also going over to Instagram to make them more successful. So Facebook obviously owns Instagram, it owns WhatsApp as well. Um, basically, has has completely neutralized competition. About three billion people use uh, at least a company that Facebook owns. Facebook or a company that it owns every single month. Uh, TikTok has about 800 million uh, monthly users. Twitter and Snapchat, or Snap, the parent company, are about 200 million. What needs to change for? Facebook's dominance to shrink slightly? What needs to change to make the landscape that much more fairer? Well, I think one thing is that if consumers feel that they're not getting value out of using the platforms or the products that Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp offers, and whether there's a, another company that provides things that might be of greater value, TikTok is growing really fast. And don't forget, these are also platforms that are not available in China, so that they have their own homegrown networks. So there's still a lot of competition out there. Um, uh, in, but I do think that uh, what you hear a little bit in, in, the, in the congressman questions today is there's some people who believe that big by its very nature is bad, and some who, who are going back and drilling down to the question of, well, are consumers better off or not? Um, I would like to hear a little bit more about that discussion, but I'm not sure that a format like this is designed to really produce that kind of information. Okay, so, so what questions should lawmakers be asking of Facebook when it comes to com competition and antitrust? Well, I, one of the things for Facebook, I think, is to sit down and think about how are they going to provide their customers with service if they say that they want, if Facebook says that um, consumers don't like the information they're getting, how can they get better information from people posting on Facebook? How does that actually happen? So that it's not just bad news or faulty news, but better news and better quality news. That's a very interesting question. Mm -hmm. And if Facebook is taking a hands off of everything, then uh, the question is, is does Facebook become a platform for only the most shrill voices, in which case it'll become less valuable for the majority of people who use it? Um, we are heading in, of course, to the 2020 election season, we have less than 100 days to go. Just in terms of misinformation, because that, that's obviously a topic um, of the day, because uh, there were a lot of concerns, of course, in 2016. How much progress has Facebook made this time around compared to 2016 in terms of tackling misinformation? And what do they need to do to restore people's trust in this country? Well, 
I think that the, the Mark Zuckerberg talked a bit about that, about hiring 30,000 people and putting a lot more money into artificial intelligence to determine fake news or, or uh, manipulated uh, systems uh, for news. Um, I don't think that as long as you have a platform, uh, I don't care whether it's the newspaper or the radio or for that matter, social media, which moves even faster, that you can have a totally perfect system. But you also have uh, you also have the other side of the equation too. What you see is a split within Congress. Some people who don't like the fact that Facebook is going through and and looking for these things and 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 perhaps censoring or acting as a gatekeeper, and some who believe that they should be more aggressive in being a gatekeeper. There's not a consensus on that in the United States. All right, Moselle Thompson, life was there. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.